Hey Pretty Girl Club, I was sitting here sipping on my iced salted caramel latte and I was just scrolling on YouTube and I saw that the one and only MLS queen, Miss Jada Pinkett Smith, has been separated from Will Smith for about seven years now and apparently they've been living separate lives. And the reason I want to talk about this is because this is what happens when hypergamy goes to the extreme. Hypergamy to the extreme is actually a form of codependency. And I'm all for dating a guy who's a protector and provider. I do that myself. But I think that the issue that we see with a person like Jada Pinkett Smith is, let's be honest, she doesn't believe in herself. She does not believe that she will be as relevant. She doesn't believe that she has as high of a social status without Will Smith. And so this keeps her in a situation where she is trapped in a loveless marriage. This keeps her in a financially codependent situation. And she doesn't leave because she can't. She feels like she can't. She feels like her relevance will go down. She feels like her finances will go down significantly. Meanwhile, Will Smith is over here openly talking about how he basically wants to fuck other women such as MLS ballerinas and MLS actresses like Halle Berry. He's out here in public talking about his sexual fantasies that do not involve Jada Pinkett and he's living his best life. Meanwhile, he gets to have a free wife, a free womb, a free mother of his children, and he gets to have the family man status. His YouTube channel is thriving. His career is thriving. Meanwhile, when's the last time you've seen Jada Pinkett Smith in a movie? When's the last time you've seen Jada Pinkett's career popping off like how it was back in the 90s and the early 2000s? You haven't. Because this is what happens when we as women ride the coattails of men who devalue us. This is what happens when we allow men to treat us as a trophy and nothing more. This is what happens when men treat us as a trophy and not as an actual human being or a partner that they are deeply in love with or a woman that they cherish. So Will Smith gets to go around slapping other men and getting praised for it. And people are like, oh, you know, he's defending his wife. He's the pinnacle of masculinity. Meanwhile, people have been trolling women like Jada Pinkett Smith for years, talking about how she's for the streets and how she got into an entanglement. Meanwhile, Will Smith has been rumored to be getting entangled with all sorts of actresses and celebrities and models for decades now, and apparently even some men as well. No shade. This is all alleged. But at this point, I'm starting to become convinced that the institution of marriage in general, especially if you're in a codependent type of marriage, it is beneficial mainly for the man, not so much for the woman. Think about if Jada Pinkett Smith were to leave this marriage. She could easily spend more time dedicated to her career. Her children are grown-ups now. She can go back into acting if she wants. She can reinstate her rock band if she wanted to or like do some sort of music again. She wouldn't have to be worried about profiting off of nothing other than the codependent drama and trauma that she's experiencing in her marriage. Imagine having a life that is so bad and so filled with abuse to the point where all you have to talk about and all you have to revolve your brand around is how much trauma you're experiencing from being married to someone like Will Smith. If that's not pathetic, I don't know what is. And I'm not on here trying to shame her. I'm not trying to shame other women, but I feel like this is an issue that we've seen with Generation X. And I feel like this is where Gen X fails. They want to promote this whole lifestyle of, oh no, you just, you have to get married and you just, you have to have kids and you have to find a guy with money. But then they don't talk about the downsides of being completely codependent and centering men. This is what happens when you center men. And this situation with their marriage, it reminds me of the whole Marjorie Harvey and Steve Harvey thing. A lot of people like to praise Steve Harvey as being some sort of high value man. Meanwhile, these same people who praise Steve Harvey are trolling Marjorie Harvey and Lori Harvey, saying that they're for the streets and saying that they are low value women. Marriage does not increase your status like you think it does as a woman. You will still be called a whore. You will still be called low value by a misogynistic man. So I don't know where this whole narrative came from. Well, actually, I do know where it came from. It came from patriarchy. It came from men who wanted to pressure women into being married or having kids. It comes from men trying to brainwash women into thinking that they are, they are somehow less valuable if they're not married. Meanwhile, these women like Jada Pinkett or Marjorie Harvey, they'll go out and get married and you will still say that they're for the streets. So it's like they did all of that. They went through all of that marriage. They are giving up their entire careers, giving up their lives, giving up their wombs to these to these cheating men. They did all of that and you are still calling them by the same names that you would have called them had they just stayed single and lived their best lives. 
This is what happens when we center men. This is what happens when we revolve our lives around, oh my God, I just have to get married. I just have to have kids. Okay, you got married, you had kids, and now what? Did your marriage make him more faithful? Did your marriage turn him into a better person? Did you birthing his children, did that change your lives to the point where now you are suddenly so fulfilled and so happy? No. You're on national television crying and you are writing books about all of the traumas you've experienced over the past 20 years. This is a typical example of what's called the sunk cost fallacy. We see this happening with women like Beyonce as well. This is when a person has a tendency to follow through or to keep doing something because they've already invested time, effort, money, or energy into it, even if the costs outweigh the benefits. Tell me, what benefits is she receiving from this marriage? Is it, is it money? Because if she's so happy with all of this money, why is she still crying? Why is she still writing books to attain more money by talking about her traumas? Like, is, are you telling me that this is the best way that a woman can make money? So you're telling me that I have to invest 20 years of my life and my womb to a cheating man and that's the only way I can make money? Are you kidding me? I can see why Lori Harvey didn't follow the same path as Marjorie Harvey. Women act like the only way that you can attain wealth or be provided for is if you jump into a marriage with a cheating narcissistic man, and that is not the case. There are so many more options that we have in life as women. Women are not a monolith. You don't have to be someone's housewife. You don't have to be someone's baby-making factory in order to sustain yourself financially. Jada Pinkett Smith was at the top of her game at the time that she got with Will Smith, and that is what attracted him to her in the first place. It's because she was living her best life. It's because she was doing her passions. It's because she was free-spirited and beautiful and confident and living her best life on her own terms. And that is is what made her so captivating in the first place. She wasn't sitting around at a red table talk discussing all of the traumas and writing books about all the traumas she's experienced in her marriage. She is a totally different woman today than she was 20 years ago. And I think about women like Jada Pinkett Smith or Marjorie Harvey or Beyonce, and I think about how all of these women, even though they are beautiful and wealthy and all that stuff, you're telling me that those women couldn't be beautiful and wealthy and living their best lives without their husbands? They easily could. Think about Beyonce. When you went on the Beyonce Renaissance tour, when you went to that concert or when you went to the last tour she was on, you didn't go to see Jay-Z. You didn't go to see his dusty ass. You came so you could see Beyonce perform because she is a better performer than him by far. You came to see her. So I, I don't believe that if you are not married or if you don't have children, then suddenly like your life is not fulfilling. And I think that when women start to subscribe to this belief, and again, these are all Gen X women, notice that pattern, Marjorie Harvey, Beyonce, Jada Pinkett, they're all a part of Generation X. When you believe this talking point that you do not reach the pinnacle of success unless you are married with children, this is where codependency can come in because then these narcissistic, average at best mediocre guys who are not even attractive in a lot of cases, then they become cocky and they're like, okay, cool. So now I know that all I need to do is have money. Then I can treat a woman however I want. I can abuse her however I want. I can stab people and get away with it. I can literally put out hits on people and get away with it. I can go on a free tour and live my life based off of her talents and I get a free womb. And all I have to do is become a dusty rapper and talk about my days back in Brooklyn when I was a thug. Oh, that's great. I'll definitely get money then if that's all it takes. And I just feel like a lot of women, we need to know our worth. And by the way, I'm not trying to like shame women who are married with kids. I'm just saying that I do think that there's a line. And I think that Generation X is the last of the pick me generation. I think that a lot of the biggest pick me's come from Generation X. They come from the baby boomer generation. They come from the generations older than us. But us millennials and Gen Z, we're not having that shit. The, the pick me days are over. We're not doing that, especially if a lot of these men are still going to go online and they're still going to say, oh, she hit the wall or, oh, she's still average at best or, oh, she's for the streets. So it's like, okay, if you're married, you're for the streets. If you're single, you're for the streets. If you're a sex worker, you're for the streets. If you have a baby, you're for the streets. If you're child free, you're for the streets. So it's like, if no matter what I do, I'm going to have people talking crap about me, I might as well do what I want. I don't have to spend seven years in the sham of a marriage. I don't have to spend seven years being cheated on and mistreated. Now, don't get me wrong. If you are polyamorous or whatever, that's fine. But that's not what I'm talking about because I'm not polyamorous. And I genuinely believe that a lot of people 
especially in Hollywood, a lot of these people who say like, oh, we're polyamorous or like I give him a pass. No, you're only saying that because he was a serial cheater and you're too scared to leave. Gabrielle Union, I'm talking about you. You're too scared to leave or whatever. And he was a serial cheater. And so in order to soothe your own pain, now suddenly you're trying to say, oh no, it was an open relationship. Oh no, it was like this the whole time. We're not falling for it. Millennials and Gen Z, we're not falling for this Gen X BS. We need to start looking at our mothers and our grandmothers and the generations who came before us. Are these women truly happy? Is this what you aspire to be? Seriously, do you aspire to spend the next 20 years of your life getting cheated on? Do you aspire to live the next 20 years of your life riding the coattails of, of a man who doesn't give a crap about you? I know that for me, that's not what I aspire to. And I think that, like I said, when it comes to millennials and Gen Z, a lot of us don't aspire to this. We are now decentering men. And I think this is why we need to have this movement because this is not just about being modern or whatever. This is about having a sense of self-love. This is about not tolerating anything that is not making your life better or making your life more fulfilling and more happy. If I'm in a situation where I'm constantly crying, I'm constantly wondering where he's at, checking his phone, getting mad at him, yelling at him, uh, trying to compete with all these side chicks and stuff, trying to compete to keep the male gaze, I'm not doing that. I'm not living my life and revolving it around the male gaze. Anyway, what do you ladies think about this whole Jada Pinkett situation? What do you think about women like Marjorie Harvey, Jada Pinkett Smith, and Beyonce? Do you think that they are truly happy in their marriages and that they will always be happy in their marriages? Or do you think that they, along with a lot of other Generation X women and baby boomer women and women from the generations before us, do you think that these women represent the last of the pick-me generation? And do you think that it is now time for us younger women to step up and say, hey, we're not tolerating the same things that our mothers and our grandmothers tolerated. What do you think? Let me know in the comment section and I'll talk to you next time. Stay pretty, ladies.